Hello, it's Helen from Journal with Purpose and welcome to my latest video. Today I'm going to be taking you through the process that I use when I'm creating a junk journal. So the first thing I did is get together lots of my old vintage book pages, magazines and scrapbooking paper. And I love to use a completely different variety of papers when I'm building a junk journal because they're so much fun when you then start creating on top of those pages. So I've got some Jane Davenport scrapbooking paper, some from Tim Holtz and also a bundle of vintage papers from London Gifties. So to start with, I'm going to make the cover and for this, I've picked some scrapbooking paper that is 12 inches by 12 inches. But you can, of course, pick any size cover that you want. And I'm going to fold that in half, first of all, and then use a bone folding tool just to make sure that I've got a really nice crisp edge on there. And if you don't have this kind of tool, then something like a heavy ruler would work really well. Now that my scrapbooking paper is folded in half, it's six inches wide and I want it to be eight inches tall. So I'm just measuring that along both sides and then I'm gonna draw a line in pencil so that I know where to cut. For cutting my paper, I'm using a sharp craft knife and sometimes it does take a couple of scores to get through that double layer of card. Now that the cover is cut, I'm going to start looking through all of those papers to decide what I want to use inside my junk journal. And this time I'm going to be using my junk journal for mixed media and to use it as an art journal. So I want as many different patterns and textures as I can possibly find. So I'm looking for pages that have already got a fold in the middle where they came out of the book, or if they're single sheets, making sure that they're large enough that I can fold them over to create pages in my journal. This is only the second junk journal I've made, though I've used quite a few of them. And the first one I did off camera just to make sure that I was happy with how it all came together. But I was asked by quite a few people if I could share my process. So I thought I'd have a go at filming this one for you. I'd love to know if you've created your own junk journal and how you got on with it. I'm going to keep this one quite simple. I will be sharing with you a pocket that I create at the end. But because I'm going to be using it for mixed media, I'm going to make sure that mainly I've got lots of flat pages. So my journal will have a combination of maps, music paper and some scrapbooking paper too. And I think that's going to be so fun to work in. The next step is going through and folding any of those larger sheets in half. And again, I'm using that bone folding tool to make sure that I've got some nice crisp edges on there. And that will just help when it comes to sewing it all together. When you're making the cover, if you want a really thick junk journal, then it's worth adding two creases along the inside so that you've got a proper spine. I'm only going to be putting about 12 different sheets in mine, so it's absolutely fine that it's only got that one fold in it. I really love knowing that all of these beautiful papers are going to be safely secured together and creating a lovely journal that I'll keep for years to come. And it's such a great way to use up any scraps that you have lying around. Now that I've got all of my pieces of paper folded, I'm going to decide what order I want them to be in my journal. So if I've got any similar kind of coloured papers or maps, 
I'll make sure that they're not right next to each other. As I've nearly finished my most recent junk journal, I'll be sharing a flip through of that with you very soon so that you can see how I used that one. So with this one, I think I'm going to use lots of acrylic paint and stenciling. And I'm already thinking about how I can make sure that I've still got lots of that lovely paper and the images exposed underneath. So I'm now just carefully laying all of those pages on top of each other so that the creases are all lined up. I'm now going to carefully fold all of those pages together so that it starts to give the shape of the book. And I'm then going to gently tap it along the spine just to make sure that they really sit in nicely together. And I'm checking how they're going to look alongside that cover. Once I'm happy that I've got those larger pages somewhat centre around my cover, I'm just going to draw a line all the way around the outside of the cover onto that top piece of paper. And that's to give me a feel for what size I want my pages to be. So I can now take that cover away. And what I'm going to do is then draw another line inside each of those because I want to make sure that all of my pages are smaller than the cover itself so that they stay nicely protected. I'm not measuring the distance apart, I'm just making sure that there's a good centimetre, centimetre and a half of that gap. And before I start cutting, I'm using some binder clips to make sure that I keep all of those pages together. And this for me is the trickiest bit, which is cutting through all of the pages. I'm using a metal ruler and that craft knife again. And it definitely takes quite a few cuts to get all of the way through. But I just keep peeling back those top pages so that I've got less there to get the knife through. And definitely use a cutting mat so that you can protect the surface you're working on. I'm now going to just keep repeating this process along all of the lines that I've drawn. Alongside this video, I also have a step-by-step -step blog post with photos. So if you'd find that easier to follow along with, then please feel free to check out my blog and the details for that and all of the products that I use will be listed in the description box down below. It's such a fun and rewarding process creating a junk journal. So I'd really hope that you have a go. And if you do create one, I'd love to see anything that you make over on Instagram. Just tag me in on the photo so that you get a chance to see it. The next thing I'm doing is measuring out where I want my holes for the sewing. And I'm going to use five holes. So I've done one in the middle and I've then done one an inch either side and then one an inch and a half further away from that. And this is roughly the measurements I used last time and I found that that was more than enough to be able to keep all of the pages together. And I'm now using a piercing tool to create a hole. And if you don't have a piercing tool, then something like a thick, sharp needle should also do the job well for you. Once I've got all of the holes in the cover, I'm just going to check those book pages one final time alongside the cover because I want to make sure that I'm completely happy with how they're going to sit inside the journal before I start measuring and putting any holes in there. So I'm just going to hold that against it and just check that it's looking okay and that I've got enough gap around the outside. Now 
Now that I'm definitely happy with that, I'm going to start making the holes inside these book pages as well. So I'm going to measure that inside spine to find the middle. And then I'm going to make sure that my markings are exactly the same distance apart as the ones that I created on the cover. I mark little crosses just to make sure that they're easy to see once I start trying to create the holes. So I'm now carefully and slowly pushing that piercing tool through the pages and trying to make sure that they line up with the hole along the spine. And this can be a little bit fiddly. In fact, I struggled a bit with the first one, but after that, they came much more easily. So I'm doing this all the way along the inside until I've got my five holes. And you'll notice that I've clipped those pages inside all together to make sure that there's no movement. For the sewing itself, I'm going to use some book binding thread, but I have previously done it with the normal sewing thread, but I just make sure that I added lots of layers of it. And you can see this on my junk journal that I've nearly finished, that that's all I did for the sewing. I say, but I went over it probably about four or five times, but it still held up really well. You could also use something like wool or twine, anything that you've got that's going to fit nicely through those holes. I'm now going to start the sewing to bind all of the pages together. And I'm sure there's lots of different ways of doing this. So to be honest, I just did what felt right, um, but there will be much more formal tutorials, I'm sure, on the correct way to bind a book. So I'm just using a thick needle and I'm going to start on the inside because I always like to be able to tie the edges together right at the end. So I'm pushing the needle through the book pages and then lining it up with that middle hole on the cover. And once that first one's in, that really helps to start keeping everything together. And once you pull it through, make sure that you've got a nice tail left at the end so that you can secure it once all of the sewing is done. So I started on the inside and now I'm going to go back through one of the closest holes. And sometimes the cover comes apart slightly at the beginning of this, but that's fine. You can then line them up and when you turn it over, just pull that thread back through to secure it. I'm now going back through that central hole because I just want to make sure that there's a couple of strands, particularly in the middle, to keep it nicely together. And then going back through that second hole that I went through, I'm going to make sure it's pulled really tightly before bringing it back all the way through that top hole up to the front. So I said this isn't necessarily the best way to do it, but it certainly worked for me. I'm now going back through that second hole again and I'm trying to make sure that I've always got a line of thread along both the outside and the inside to make sure that it's really nice and secure. And I did exactly the same along the bottom two holes as well. So you can see there, there's always that thread along the spine. And now that's finished, I'm going to make sure they're really nice and tight and tie those two ends together in a double knot and cut off any of the excess. It's really worth giving that thread a little tug just before you tie it, making sure that you've got the pages nice and firmly together. It feels like such a lovely sense of accomplishment when you've finished the sewing and cutting and know that all of your pages are secured together. So I'm now just going to take those clips off 
fold the journal closed and check that everything sits nicely together. And if you needed to at this stage, you could always tidy up any overhanging pages and just carefully cut through them. So I'm now going to flip through those pages. They're all different sizes, which I absolutely love. I think it makes for such an interesting book. And I've managed to keep any of the pages that are similar to each other in different sections. As I mentioned, I'm going to be using this one as an art journal. So I've left lots of those pages flat, but otherwise I'd be adding in tipping cards and tags and all sorts of things. But in a moment, I will be sharing with you a pocket that I'm really excited to create. And I'm going to use that to decorate some mixed media tags and put them inside. And I'll definitely be sharing some videos with you later on on how I use this journal. So for the pocket that I'm creating, I'm following along with a tutorial by Joey DeFee, who is here on YouTube. She does some amazing videos on different pockets and tags, junk journaling, anything to do with vintage papers. So I will leave her channel linked down below so that you can find that video. So I'm going to be doing this bit rather quickly. So rather than talk it through with you, if you want to check out her tutorial, it's definitely worth a go. I'd never created a triple fold pocket before, but it turned out really well. And in fact, I sat one evening and have made about another five or six of these that I'm going to use inside my traveler's notebook and also put them inside this journal too. And this weekend, I'm planning to do some sewing around the outside of these pockets, just to add another interesting effect. For this particular pocket, I'm using a sheet of matte paper, but I've since made some with scrapbooking paper and large old book pages too, and they've all come out really well. So you can see at that end bit now, now that I folded them all over, there's going to be three different pockets in there. And I thought that would be great for putting in tickets, but also for me to do some little watercolour cards and mixed media tags. And I'll definitely share some videos, as I mentioned, later on once I start creating in the journal. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video of how I made a junk journal. If you did enjoy it, it would be great if you'd leave my video with a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, I would love it if you would consider subscribing. If you've got any questions or comments, then please do pop them down below. And if you create a junk journal, then don't forget to tag me on Instagram as Journal With Purpose so that I can have a good look at your creations. Thank you ever so much for watching and I look forward to speaking to you really soon in the next one.